Hello everyone, my name is Ak, and today we'll be analyzing a malicious email attachment that a user tried to download from an unsolicited email. Luckily for us, Antivirus identified it as a generic Trojan and automatically removed it from the system. Uh, while it was great to see our Antivirus working, I really wanted to see what this Trojan actually was, so I retrieved a sample from the user's machine and perform some analysis on it. In this video, I will be going through my approach on analyzing the malicious attachment and what I found. All right, so I've gone ahead and copied over the malicious attachment to the analysis VM that I have. For the purpose of the demonstration, let's pretend that we don't know what the zip file is. When we don't know what the zip file is, we need to find out um, what's inside the actual zip file. So in order to do this, you don't want to double click onto it. You want to use an archive tool such as 7-Zip to open up the archive to actually see what's inside. So we'll go ahead and open um, the archive. And if we expand this column here, we can see the actual file inside is some sort of JavaScript file. Now that we know what we're working with, we can go ahead and extract this JavaScript file and take a closer look. So go ahead and extract that and I'm actually going to open it with Sublime. You want to avoid double clicking this file so that it doesn't actually execute the code inside. You just want to view what's inside so we can determine what it actually is. So as you can see here, it looks like the JavaScript is creating an array and storing some values inside. One of the things I picked up on immediately is seeing .exe here. Um, it's interesting because it probably indicates this is going to create some sort of executable or perhaps maybe call on an executable or maybe even download an executable. But you see here the JavaScript is not formatted in a way where it can easily be read. Um, so we're going to actually do some cleanup and beautify this script. So in order to beautify the script, we can either do it through an online tool or we can use an offline tool such as PDF Stream Dumper, which is my preference. So we're going to go ahead and open up PDF Stream Dumper. And we're going to copy the entire code. And paste it into the JavaScript UI. So once we paste that in, we can select all and select format JavaScript and what this does it puts in the necessary new lines or puts in the indents so that it looks nicer or beautified and we can read it a lot easier we can copy this back out and paste it back into our sublime So now that it's a little bit easier to read, let's see what else we can find out. So we can see exe, we see HTTPS. So HTTPS means maybe we're gonna find some sort of C2 in here. Maybe it's downloading the actual executable. We won't actually know yet. Now we can do all of this manually and just go through the array step by step and write it out. But we can use a tool called Firebug to perform the analysis for us. And in order to do that, we have to turn this JavaScript file into an HTML file. And that's as simple as adding the necessary HTML um, tags and the script tag. So to start off, we'll add the HTML tag. And we'll add in the script tag because this is a JavaScript file. And we'll scroll down and close the tags. So for script. And we'll go ahead and save this as a different name. Save it as a .html file. Save. And once you've gone ahead and created that HTML file, we'll go ahead and navigate to the directory with the HTML file. And we're going to go ahead and launch this HTML file. 
Now, if you're following along, you need to be careful that you don't have an active internet connection or connected to a production environment. Executing this script will actually call out to any C2s identified in here or run whatever process um, that has been listed in here. So be very cautious when dealing with these types of files. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click the javascript.html. Um, it will automatically open for me in Firefox because that's my default browser. And once it opens, we'll go ahead and execute Firebug. Now Firebug is a tool uh, designed for web developers to troubleshoot their code, but we can also use it to see what the results of the code looks like. So on the left hand side, you have the original code that uh, contains the arrays and on the right hand side are the results so you can see here these are the variables and over here are the the values inside the variables so one of the interesting things here is looking at this variable this variable contains some domains uh, which could be c2s to either um, get more directions or get directions on what to do next or to send information out we don't know exactly yet what it's doing, but we'll continue our investigation. We have V43 here. Um, it looks like it contains a lot of code. Um, so we can take a better look at this by copying the value out. And we'll paste it into our sublime. So copying this out, it looks like we have a, just a bunch more ugly code. So to continue looking at this, let's try beautifying this to see if it's a little bit easier to read. So we're going to go through the same process. Just copy this out and open up the PDF stream dumper. Paste in your code and we're going to format JavaScript. So now we can copy it out paste it back into our sublime and you see the code is much more formatted so let's take a look at what we're dealing with here so we can see the domains here um, as we identified in firebug what else can we see we see it looks like a get request for HTTP and it's calling upon the array with these domains and it looks like if the status is 200 then it's going to save whatever it received to a file and append the extension .exe. So now we know that what this script does, it actually calls out to one of these domains, tries to download a file and saves it on the computer. So coming down a little bit further, it looks like it's creating a text file and it's writing um, some lines into a text file. And if you take a look here, there's some mention about bitcoins, um, it looks like this could possibly be some ransomware. Yes, it does look like it's ransomware. So the extension of the files that it encrypts looks like it's going to be dot crypted. So we can take that and figure out what variant of ransomware this actually is. Uh, luckily for the user that tried to execute this, the antivirus picked up on it really quickly, didn't actually identify as ransomware, but it did pick up that this was a malicious attachment and removed it from the computer immediately. All right, so the easiest way to figure out what ransomware variant this is is to do a quick Google search for the extension .crypted. Uh, it's likely that this has already been uh, seen in the community and there may be information on it already. So there's no harm in doing a quick Google search, save you some time to figure out what it is. So we'll open up our browser, and we'll type in cryptid, and it looks like the first thing that comes up was from March 23rd, 2016, and this article is identifying as Numicode. So let's take a look at that. So it looks like they have a free decryptor for the Numicode.crypted um, ransomware already, so that's good news. Um, Luckily for us, we won't even need the decryptor because the uh, antivirus already picked up on the initial attachment. So now that we were able to decode everything, we have the actual uh, attachment that would have downloaded the ransomware on this machine. Um, 
the antivirus did pick up on it so what more can we do with this well we have some more information on this now we have uh, a few domains here we have this .ru address we have these puny code addresses so we can begin our OSINT research to see what else um, are using these domains as C2s um, are there any other domains related to these domains identified here and most importantly we can search our environment to see who else went there if there was another uh, system identified reaching out to these domains it could be a possible identifier of that system being compromised and also put in block requests for these domains um, and make sure that any future requests for these domains are unsuccessful thank you everyone for watching I hope I was able to teach you something new if you have any questions or comments about this video please feel free to leave me a comment or contact me through my blog please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel when you have a minute, go ahead and also check out my blog at blog.axsecurity.tech.